Hey there, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well today. So what we're doing today is the second part of the issue proposal. But first, I would like to pull up our schedule very quickly. So we are on week five of class, and I am taking a look at what we're doing for February 23rd. So what we're talking about is the issue proposal part two, including evidence and reasons within the issue proposal and mastering logos. So the homework for today is to finish writing lab number one by midnight and to read the Norton Field Guide pages 49 through 53 and to continue drafting the issue proposal. So that is what we are working on this week is to continue drafting the issue proposal. So writing lab number one was about drafting your thesis statement and your introduction. So that is what we are talking about today is drafting the body paragraphs. And then on Thursday, we will continue drafting and talk about the conclusion of the issue proposal. So please note that the rough draft is due on Tuesday, March 2nd. And on Tuesday, March 2nd, we will begin peer review for the issue proposal. And then the final draft of the issue proposal is due on Thursday, March 4th by midnight. So and that is very much what we will be working on. So here is the lesson for today, which, you, which is the issue proposal part two and mastering logos. Now this video might be a little bit longer. I'm sort of combining two lessons into one, but the reason I am doing that is so we will have time on Thursday to talk a little bit more about the guidelines and also the conclusion. So today I would like to sort of, I have two sort of mini lessons combined. So this video might be a little bit longer, but it will be worth it. Okay, so this is for including reasons and support and your body paragraphs in the issue proposal. So welcome back to the issue proposal. So it is a pre-research argument in which students propose an issue for focus in English 1530. So the first step in making an informed, educated argument is not to begin making claims on a topic, but to consider if a topic is worthy of focus. So this is the guidance sheet for the issue proposal that we have looked at. But most importantly, I would like to focus talking about the reasons why your topic is acceptable for research. So reasons support the claim you are making. There, there should be three total reasons why your topic is a good topic. So we will talk about developing reasons. So one reason that you definitely want to consider is one of the reasons why your issue is acceptable for a research project is because it is debatable. So these players all say different things and have different needs. So debatable issues make good topics for research in this class. So you can use the guided invention questions below to help you thinking about providing support for this reason. So one thing that you want to think about is what is it that makes your issue an arguable issue? Who is in the debate? What is it that you hear these major players saying? What kind of claims does each side or participant in the debate make? And what may be at stake for some of these players? So another reason why your issue is acceptable is because it is sustainable. And what that means is that there is enough research out there to support your topic. So just as an example, the issue of abortion, there are so many authors and writers that have written about the issue of, of abortion. So that means that it will cure you for the duration of the semester. You'll have to consider why this issue is complex enough for sustained research and thought. So some things to think about is what is so controversial about your topic? What makes the issue relevant? What makes it current and timely? Is there enough material for six weeks of research? And how do you know this? How might this debate impact the world as we know it today? So the third reason you want to consider 
is why the issue you chose would make a good debate to enter the semester because it is a researchable argument. So we won't be interested in what you don't know or what you are unsure about regarding the issue, and that's where the research part really comes in. So how are you supposed to know what you don't know yet? Well, this takes quite a bit of thinking, and it might evolve over the writing process, and that's perfectly okay. In fact, that's the whole point of this project, is that your writing process evolves over the course of the semester and over the course of these papers. So you might need more data, facts, and statistics. So that is probably the most obvious, and you may also need to learn more things about the larger cultural context in which your field operates. So remember that any disciplinary interpretation rests on its relationship to cultural and historical context. So whatever you do, you definitely want to be detailed. So some things to be thinking about. What are the main questions you want to pursue or answer over the course of the semester? Now, this is something that many of you have already thought about even in your diagnostic essay, and that's excellent. You are more than welcome to carry that over from your diagnostic essay into your issue proposal. In fact, I would encourage you to do so because many of you have posed some very interesting research questions. So how would you answer these questions right now and why? What more do you need to learn about the issue and where might you go to find more information? So we, we, we will be doing a workshop in a couple weeks about the library databases and that is very much where we will be finding most of our research. So what do you know about the issue already? How do you acquire your knowledge about the issue? Now, delivery basically has a lot to do with logos, ethos, and pathos. And we will be talking about logos in particular today. Well, first, let's just vin visit this very briefly. So be sure to attach enough supporting detail so that is clear your reasons are valid or ethical or true. So your own forethought and experience counts as evidence supporting details because the, the, invent the intention is to take stock of an issue. You will need to make sure you fully explore the guided questions for success on this front. Now, pathos is very much emotional appeal, and of course, that will come from you. So remember, you are making an appeal of your own, which means that you should use imagery style and careful word choice to draw upon the emotions of your audience. We have very much talked about how Biden did this in his inaugural in his in inauguration speech and political speakers and ads actually do this all the time. So be sure to construct an individual nuanced creative thesis statement. And what we're focusing on today is logos. So you'll need to attach reasons to your claim so that you have a logical, rational, and well-organized composition. So your reasons are given to you. So this part may not be too difficult. However, you will still need to make sure you articulate your reasons well, and they are properly placed within the body of the essay. So we'll be talking a little bit about organization as well. But if you uh, need a reference, the Little Seagull Handbook has a section on, on organization and reasoning, and that is on page 47. So that is very much what we will be talking about and covering today. Okay, so as always, we want to return back to the rhetorical situation. So of course, you want to consider your purpose, your audience, and the argument. Since everything is debatable, everything's an argument, which means you'll be entering a rhetorical situation of your own when you sit down to write the issue proposal. So this is the rhetorical situation. So for the invention, invention simply means discovering what you are going to say. So for this paper, you will take stock of what you already know about the issue you select, organize and develop your thoughts, and sketch a plan for your research. So, so your audience will be your classmates and myself. So you are the author of the argument. Now these are example introductions that previous students have done for their issue proposals. So I would like to go over a few of these examples. So foster care is a system in which children who are neglected get placed into state-certified homes with other families to care for them. 
foster care is something that is very important to me. Up until 2019, I was a foster child along with my two younger siblings. Now, what that sentence is doing there is creating some emotional appeal. So my whole life was filled with drugs and drug addicts. My whole family were addicts, including my siblings and I. So in the past seven years, I have lived in 21 different homes with multiple strangers. In 2019, I was adopted by one home in seven years. So after the things I went through, the things that, that happened in foster care destroyed me, but I would not have found my forever home without it. So what that introduction is doing is very much framing in the context why foster care is an important and sustainable research topic. Now here's another one. This one is about religion. So what this student does is defining religion. So religion is defined by many as belief in and worship of superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. Across the world, there are those that in some form or another practice, by definition, a religion. So for some, it is a casual indulgence in a discourse community. For others, it is an all-encompassing aspect of their lives that guide them through their day-to-day -day living. So what that very much is doing is framing the context of the topic, and that def is definitely something that you want to do within your introduction, especially on a topic that your reader might not be very knowledgeable about in general. So it definitely helps to frame some context. So religions differ from the gods they serve to their place is of worship, their holy texts, and so on. So one religion that has been predominant in North America is Christianity. Christianity has been a leading world religion. And then their thesis statement is down here. And so the discussion around this religion has largely been centered around its validity in comparison to other religions in regards to science as well. That has a topic in politics and social life. So these are some other example thesis statements. From ordinary people to tech giants like Amazon and Facebook, there is little agreement on the use of artificial intelligence. In a time of pandemic-induced technology dependence, the debate surrounding artificial intelligence is a clear topic of research this semester. And here's another one here. What truly lies behind the curtain for humans? If such science move forward and this debate begins to notes, begin to grow, so much is poised to happen in the next few years with many challenges that face the re-engineering the human genome. I want to use my time this semester to find out more about it so I can enter the debate myself. So that one is talking about uh, genetic engineering, which is like a major issue right now. There's so much research behind this stuff. And here's another one on artificial intelligence. So. Though the opinions are widespread, it is clear that artificial intelligence is becoming a bigger part of our lives with every new invention. So determining the effects of the expansion of AI is an urgent matter appropriate for, research for a research project this semester. And here's another one that's actually about opening schools. So I wanted to make sure to choose a topic that is extremely urgent and current and one that matters to future generations. Opening schools during the pandemic is a hotly contested issue that is on the news every single day because it impacts every person on the globe, especially those that are the most impoverished. I am certain that there is no better topic for me to work on than this one for a semester's project. So regardless of which position you take, you simply cannot argue that obesity is not an issue that needs attention. Juvenile obesity is growing every day. So again, these are very much topics that are very much in the news right now. So although there is a potential great future with this new form of medicine technology, there are still characteristics about stem cells that make them controversial. The fact that stem cells are debatable, researchable, and a contemporary topic is why I chose stem cells for my issue proposal. So that is very much what you are working on. So we have already current 
crafted an introduction and a thesis statement, and you have shared it with me. Um, again, that writing lab number one is due by Tuesday at midnight. So definitely be sure to share it with me, and I will try to get back to you with feedback as soon as possible. So now what we really want to focus on is moving forward with your argument to provide reasons and support. So the reasons. Reasons why your topic will be a good one to work with this semester. So reasons support the claim you are making. There are three total reasons why your topic is a good topic to work with this semester. So supporting detail will support these reasons. So the claim, this issue is a good topic because of reason one, two, and three. So reasons belong in the topic senses of body paragraphs. We know this because we have very much practiced this already within our oratory analysis and the diagnostic essay. Oops, sorry. So here is the topic sentence here, and this is just an example that I found online. So good health requires a balanced diet, plenty of exercise, and a positive attitude. That is your main topic sentence there. And then you have supporting details. So first, to keep the body strong, it is important to have a balanced, nutritious diet. So for example, it is important to eat many kinds of fruits and vegetables. And second, getting a lot of exercise is very important for keeping a strong body and burning off fat. And then they have their conclusion of their paragraph, which is, in conclusion, eating the right foods, being physically active, and thinking positive thoughts are the best ways to stay healthy. So here's another example. So putting that all together, we're creating a sort of sandwich here of a claim or your thesis statement, your supporting reason, and your evidence. So this one is about reform. So I was asked to explore several issues and topics to work with over the semester of English 1530. As I explored the topics, one in particular stood out to me and all the rest. Penal reform means to change the prison system for the better. So reformists seek to undermine the racial and class injustices that keep certain populations in jail and on a reoccurring basis. So as prisons become more privatized, the bottom dollar takes the place of humane treatment. So this is very much forming background information. So in fact, some prison, prisons use inmates as hard labor or free labor. So penal reform is one of the utmost importance since every American knows someone who has been affected by recent changes in the prison code. So people are suffering needlessly while subject to a system that is intended to keep prisoners in it. And then here's their thesis statement. After reflecting on hundreds of issues, I have determined that penal reform is an excellent topic of research since it is highly debatable and current. So then they start their next body paragraph with their supporting reason or their, or their topic sentence. So penal reform is a definitive topic for research since there are many sites debating the issue. And then they also include some evidence. So law, lawmakers and corporations are heavily invested in the topic of penal reform. Corporations seek to make money and privatize prisons further. Lawmakers and the government are torn. Some Republicans wish to make prisons in private hands, while Democrats tend to focus on governmental intervention. Victims of crimes obviously want justice and are likely to see prison labor as something that is warranted as punishment. On the other hand, prisoners are the ones who are often suffering at the hands of private money and labor, and then that is where you include more support and evidence. So one thing we want to talk about is the, is the debate. So one of the reasons why your issue is acceptable for a research project is because it is debatable. So this means that there must be some major players or some vocal participants in the debate. So these players all say different things and have different needs. So debatable issues make good topics for research in this class. So your claim should be this is issue is a good topic because it is debatable. So the debate, if an issue is debatable, there must be a controversy within multiple groups involved. So these are the things that you want to be thinking about when sitting down to write this. Especially if you consider a topic like abortion. There are different groups that have different views on the topic, and that's exactly what you want to be talking about. 
So who are the speakers or players reacting to your problem or the issue? What do the players have to gain or lose if the outcome changes? What do you hear these types of pe people generally arguing and why? What do the players worry about? What do they care about? You want to talk about or consider their values. What types of people are they? Are they young? Are they voters? What is the major controversy in your issue? And of course, uh, we will be moving on to talking about sustainability. So another reason why your issue is acceptable is because it is sustainable. So what that means is that it will carry you for the 15 weeks of the semester. You'll have to consider why this issue is complex enough for sustained research and thought. So current and relevant issues make good topics for research in this class. So what that means, if an issue is sustainable, it must be current, relevant, and timely. So what makes the issue relevant to today? How is this a current issue? Are there players in the news right now that are visible to the public and who might it be? Is your topic visible or in the news right now? What makes this issue alive and ongoing? Show us how the issue is not likely to be resolved anytime soon. And how is the issue complex enough for sustained research and thought. And of course, the third reason that we have already touched on is because it is a researchable topic. Now, there must be some things you know now and some things that you will need to find out. And issues that are researchable make good topics for this course. So if an issue is researchable, there must be things you know and things that you might not know about, and that is perfectly okay. So those are things that you want to be thinking about during this issue proposal. So what do you know about the issue already? How did you acquire your knowledge about the issue? What are the main research questions you want to pursue? So you want to think about maybe three to four main questions that you might want to find out about your topic during the course of the semester. So how would you answer these questions right now and why? What more do you need to learn about the issues? What might you, where might you go to find out some answers to your questions? So this is very much the format. So it should be one inch margins, 12 point font, and it should include the title, name, professor, class, and date. So this is the introduction to the essay. And the thesis should go at the end here. So your first body of paragraphs begins here with a topic sentence, which will state your reason. So after you state your reason near the beginning of the paragraph, you can add supporting detail here to fill out the paragraph. Now you are likely, highly likely to have more than one paragraph per reason, and that is okay. So when you start a new paragraph, you'll have a new topic sentence that points to whichever reason you are working with. And then I can start a new paragraph with, with a new topic sentence here. And definitely at the top, make sure that you have your name, your professor's name, English 1530, and the date you are writing. So this is the homework for today, is to continue drafting. So many of you have already turned in your introduction and your thesis statement. So then from there, we will continue working on, uh, and this is the homework for Tuesday, is to add reasons and support to your issue proposal or writing the body paragraph and writing the body paragraphs. <laughs> and make sure to share the working draft with me via Google Doc and send the link to my email by sharing it and type in my email. And then on Thursday, we will continue working on the conclusion. But now I would like to turn to our second part of the lessons today. And I just want to talk about a, a little bit about logos or logical appeal. So very much the part of 1530 is to push the rhetorical triangle a little bit further, especially in terms of study. So logos. So what you know from 1510 is that logos has to do with ways of communicating or ways of persuading, which is very much what we have been talking about. So logos deals with logic, the reasonable, rational, and methodical manner of argument. So logos deals with the literal, actual discourse being used by the speaker, the claims, and the reasons together. So 
So that's very much what we're doing now is practicing logos. So we will need to create a position. A position is a claim and a reason set together. So that is where you have your thesis, because, and then a supporting reason, and that is the evidence. So pushing it a little bit further, we have already talked about this guy, Aristotle. So when you use logos, you are using critical thinking. Your goal is to utilize the reasoning behind any given logic to determine if a, if a reasonable driven audience would accept it. And of course, here is our rhetorical triangle here. So logos is very much about consistency or logic. And pathos is about emotions and imagination. Ethos is about building credibility and trust. So two ways is to generalize the context and apply it to many situations or to specify exceptions showing how your particular case is different. So the way it works, here's a sample claim. So smoking should be banned because it is harmful. So the logical assumption is that it is harmful and that's why it should be banned. So you want to keep the action in place and then keep the reasoning in place. So a lot the logical assumption in here is that things are harmful and should be banned. Harmful things should be banned. That is the logical assumption. So smoking should be banned because it is harmful. So the logical assumption is harmful things should be banned, but now there might be occurring exceptions to this. So are there harmful things that we have not banned or would not want banned? And this can include things like alcohol, tobacco, firearms, knives, football, or other things like Big Macs and fries. So trying this, uh, trying this again. Smoking should be banned. And of course, you want to think about the logical assumption and if there are any exceptions. Now, in terms of the issue proposal, you want to think about your claim. So let's take the topic of abortion for a second. So abortion will make a good topic for research this for research this semester because it is a debatable issue and you want to include your general idea. It is a sustainable issue and it is a researchable issue. Now these are things that you definitely need to prove and that will be within the body paragraphs. So support this reason by supporting supporting detail. What this means is that you will want to use the guided questions to get enough detail to support your reasoning and to prove that it is a debatable, sustainable, and researchable issue. So in terms of today's world, I just want to talk about logos. So very much logos um, occurs very much, like I said, in everyday things that we might not think about. So uh, for example, there are arguments facts, figures, data, numbers. So any scientific fact that can be proven by things like a scientific study or a news article, that is a piece of logos and that is building an argument. And it also, many of those also have scientific research and statistics and also numbers and data. So I have a small video here on Logos. It's only about two minutes, but I figured it would be useful to include within this lesson. And like I said, it's only about two minutes long. Anyway, that is it for today. If you have any questions, please do feel free to email me. Again, what we are working on is to continue drafting the issue proposal and today is very much focused on writing the body paragraphs. And then on Thursday, we will begin talking about writing the conclusion. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day and thank you.